Hello and welcome to the Mail in a Box Setup Guide. Mail in a Box helps you take control of your email. It is an easy to deploy mail server in a box. This video tutorial will walk you through the same instructions that are found in the Setup Guide on the Mail in a Box website. This will take you about two hours. In this tutorial, I'm going to create a new email address for myself, me at joshmail.xyz. I'm going to need a domain name, that's joshmail.xyz, and a computer living out on the internet called a server. Mail in a Box configures that server so that it provides mail server functionality, including support for mobile devices, webmail, a spam filter, and other protocols needed for mail delivery. Please go through the pre-flight checklist in the setup guide on the website. Getting a domain name, a server, and an SSL certificate will cost about $16 per month. If you have a website or a web server already, or if you want to tinker with the system after setting it up, please consult the guide. Your first task is to choose a domain name. The part after the at sign in an email address is a domain name, and you'll have to buy one that you want. You can buy almost any domain name you like, except it can already be owned by someone else, and every domain name has to end in a top-level domain, or TLD. .com is the most famous TLD. There are about 900 of them, and .xyz in my example is actually a real one too. TLDs aren't all the same though, so please be mindful of the cost, legal requirements, and technical limitations of the TLD you choose. The next thing that you need to know is that your server is going to have a name. Its name should be box plus a period plus your domain name. In this example, the server's name will be box.joshmail.xyz. This is also going to be the address on the web for your mail services. Let's get started by buying a domain name. Go to gandhi.net, which is my favorite domain name registrar. Check if the domain name you want is available. I'm checking joshmail.xyz, and in fact, it is available for $5 per year. Click Add, and then click Order. In order to buy this name, you're going to have to create an account at Gandhi. You'll have to tell Gandhi whether you're buying the domain name as an individual or as a company, and then you'll enter your name and a password. This password will give access to your domain name, so choose something long and secure. You'll also have to choose a security question, and again, choose something you can give a long and complicated answer to. Your favorite food is a good question to choose here. Down at the bottom, you'll have to enter an existing email address you have. That might be your Gmail address if you have one. Make sure that address remains secure as well, because anyone with access to your email will get access to your Gandhi account. Then turn off the newsletter, turn on the anti-spam system and private domain registration, and turn off reselling of your data. Agree to the contract, and click Submit. There are some technical details that I would like to review with you first, including the contacts for the domain name and its DNS settings. There is nothing for you to do here. You'll change the DNS settings later. At the bottom of the page, agree to the contract. If there is a special contract for the TLD you chose, do review it and make sure your intended use of your domain name complies with the rules for that TLD. Gandhi will show you at the top of the page that it's working on your order. Then go through payment. I already have a Gandhi account, so I'm going to skip ahead here. Once inside your account, you might see that your order is still in progress. But once the order is ready and this list is empty, you can head over to the Services tab and your domain name will be there. Click the domain name to go to its control panel and then look it over to make sure the information you've entered so far is correct. The next step is to get a server. Head over to digitalocean.com, which is my favorite place to get a new server. You're going to have to create an account here also. Again, use an existing email address that you have, like at Gmail. I already have an account at DigitalOcean, but you'll need to confirm your email address first, and then enter your billing information before you can go forward. Once you've got that done, you can create a droplet which is what DigitalOcean calls a server. You must name your droplet the name we discussed earlier. In my case, that's box.joshmail.xyz. You also must choose the $10 size or bigger, 
The $5 size just isn't powerful enough for mail. And choose the region that's closest to you so your server is more responsive. If your region supports it, turn on IPv6 and enable backups. DigitalOcean will create backups of your server automatically in case you need them. You must choose Ubuntu 14.04 x64. That's the only platform that Mail in a Box supports. And then you need to add an SSH key. This is like your front door key, and it's what gives you administrative access to your new server. In order to create a key, you'll need to get to a terminal. This is how you get to a terminal in Ubuntu Linux. It's similar on a Mac, but totally different on Windows. Open up a terminal, and then you'll just have to follow along with these commands. The command will create a key, which will be stored in two files on disk with lots of random characters. So type in ssh dash keygen dash t rsa dash b 4096 dash capital C and then some handle for yourself, your Twitter account, your first name, anything but without any spaces in it. Hit enter a few times to accept the defaults for the questions, although you may enter a passphrase if you want. The first file this command creates is called the private key, and it's stored on your hard drive in the location that I'm going to highlight on screen. The private key is private. Do not share it, do not send it over email, do not copy it to another computer, never give it away. The second file is the public key. It goes hand in hand with the private key, but you do give it to other people so that they can identify you. I'm going to highlight the location of the public key file now on your hard drive. You should copy this location to the clipboard. Then type cat a space, and then paste the location of the public key file, and then press enter. The terminal will show what's inside the file. This random text identifies your private key, but doesn't actually have your private key in it. Copy that public key to your clipboard, and then switch back to DigitalOcean. Paste the public key into the box there. Label it so you can remember what computer the key is stored on, and then click Add SSH Key. Then click Create Droplet. DigitalOcean is now going to spin up a new virtual server for you in its cloud. The server will be turned on all the time, waiting to send and receive mail for you. This step takes about a minute, and I'm fast forwarding ahead in the video. Once it's finished, you'll be taken to the control panel for your server. Copy the IP address of your server to the clipboard. It's at the beginning of the line here. Head back over to Gandhi and scroll down on your domain name control panel. Click on Glue Record Management. Scroll down and for name, type in ns1.box. That stands for Name Server 1. This is a subdomain of your domain name. Paste in the IP address below it. Operations on Gandhi take a few moments to go through, and while that's happening, we'll add a second glue record. This time enter ns2.box and paste the same IP address again. If you ever add other domain names to your server, you do not repeat this part. Once the glue records are in, head back to the main page. Your server can host mail for more than one domain name, and if you register more domain names for use with Mail in a Box, you will have to do this next part for each domain name. Go to Modify Servers, 
and enter ns1.box.joshmail.xyz and ns2.box.joshmail.xyz, replacing joshmail.xyz with your domain name, of course. If you're repeating this step later for a second domain name, you'll type in these exact name servers again to match the two glue records that you'll already have. Now go back to the terminal, and we'll log into the new server using SSH. Type in SSH root at, and then paste the IP address of your server. If you're concerned about security, you may want to confirm the host key fingerprint. I'm showing in the little pop-up what to check in against at DigitalOcean. Either way, type in yes and press enter. Now grab the mail in a box installation command from the mail in a box website. Look for the command that starts with curl and ends with bash. Copy it to the clipboard. Then paste it into the terminal. And press enter. This starts the real mail in a box setup. Mail in a box is going to download software and configure your server so it becomes a mail server. It will ask you a few questions. You can choose a new email address at this point, but don't change the domain name. It will confirm the server's name. Just press enter. Now use the down key on your keyboard to choose your country and hit enter. This next part takes about 10 minutes and I'll speed this up in the video so that we can get through it quickly. Mail in a box is just a system configuration pulling in other people's software and configuring it. At the end of the installation, it will ask you for a mail password, for checking your new mail account in webmail and on your devices, and for access to the server's own mail in a box control panel, which you'll see in just a moment. Choose a secure password and enter it twice. It now gives you instructions for the next step. Copy the new control panel address and open it up in your web browser. Because you don't have an SSL certificate yet, the connection can't be verified as secure, although it probably is. If you're concerned about security, do this part in Firefox and compare the SHA-1 fingerprint of the certificate shown in Firefox with the fingerprint printed in the terminal at the very end of the mail in a box installation. Either way, confirm the exception and log into your mail in a box. Use your new email address and the password you just entered a moment ago. It will start you on the system status checks, which check that the box has been configured correctly so far. And at this point, you should see exactly what I have here. We'll come back to the issues at the top later, but the green lines and check marks below it indicate that you're almost done. If your page doesn't look like this, wait about 20 minutes and then reload the page. DNS changes can take some time to take effect. There's an optional step that we're going to do now. This is DNSSEC setup, which adds enhanced security for DNS. Expand the DNSSEC information. Note that key flags and algorithm number, which are KSK and 7 for me, and copy the DNSSEC public key to the clipboard. Open up the Gandhi control panel and scroll down to Manage DNSSEC. Change the flags in the algorithm to match what the status checks told you to use. It's not necessarily what is shown here. Then paste in the DNSSEC public key and click Add. It will take a moment to go through. After a few minutes, reload the status checks page and ensure that the DNSSEC warning is gone and instead appears green with a check mark. This and anything related to DNS could take up to 20 minutes to update. The next issue it tells you to resolve is a missing SSL certificate. Head over to the SSL certificates section of the control panel. Then click install certificate across from your server's name and copy the certificate signing request, or CSR, to the clipboard. Then go back to Gandhi. Click the link to buy an SSL certificate. 
you need what they call a standard SSL certificate, which normally costs $16 a year, but Gandhi gives you one year free with your new domain name, so right now it's free. Paste the CSR into the form here. Check that the domain name listed below it is your server's name, then choose Nginx, and click Submit. There are different ways that you can prove to Gandhi that you own this domain name, which is a little weird because you just bought it, but in any case, the only one that will work for you right now is validation by DNS record. Select that. While I'm finishing this on screen, let me tell you what this is. An SSL certificate is a file installed on your server to enable encrypted and authenticated communications between your devices and your server. Gandhi will check that you are in control of the domain name. They'll then give you a certificate file for your server. When your devices connect to your server, they know to trust Gandhi's certificate. Certificates are good for one year. Your order may be in progress for a few moments. Reload the page to see if the pencil icon becomes available. If it does, click it to see the status of the order and instructions for validation by DNS. Copy the beginning of the DNS record up to the point where it says box, and then head back over to the mail in a box control panel. Switch to the custom DNS section and paste what's on the clipboard into the subdomain box. Change the record type to CNAME, then go back to Gandhi and copy the last part of the record including the final period. Paste that into the value field in the mail in a box control panel. Click set record and then confirm that below it the record was added. Now we have to wait for Gandhi to check that we've added the DNS record. This part may take half an hour. You'll get an email from Gandhi when the SSL certificate is ready. When it is, reload this page. The last step here will still say pending, but ignore it, I don't know what it means, and then head back to this page. Which lists all of your SSL certificates? You'll have one. Click the magnifying glass next to your certificate. It will show you your certificate. Don't share the certificate with anyone. Copy it to your clipboard, and then head back to the mail in a box control panel. Go back to the SSL certificate installation for your server's name. Paste the certificate into the first field. This isn't actually enough, though. Gandhi issues you a certificate, but also gives you an intermediate certificate chain, which is used by all of their customers. Copy the intermediate certificate chain and paste it into the second field in the control panel. Then submit that. Now if we visit the website at box.joshmail.xyz, we'll see it has a secure connection using the SSL certificate. Because we just installed a new certificate on the page we were viewing, Firefox has gotten all confused but we can actually just open up the control panel at a better address using the server's name this time, rather than as IP address. Go to https colon slash slash box.joshmail.xyz, using your domain name, of course, slash admin. Login again. It will run the status checks again. Now the SSL certificate line will be in green, and it says it is signed and valid, and it will let you know how long until the certificate expires, which will be one year from now. Everything looks good. The last issue we'll address is that the status checks have been saying a reboot of the server is necessary. Go back to the terminal, which would still be logged into your server, type reboot, and press enter. Your server will log you out and then reboot. DigitalOcean servers reboot super fast, so once we get back to the terminal, I'll show you how to log back in, this time using the server's name rather than its IP address. This is the same address as on the web, box.joshmail.xyz or your server's name. 
that's much easier to remember than its IP address. It asks the same confirmation as earlier because you're using a different address this time. In the future, if you need to reboot, you can log in like this and type reboot again. If you need to rerun the setup because something went wrong, just type in mail in a box and press enter. Type logout and press enter when you are done and want to log on.